I appreciate uh, you joining to me today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw your uh, recent interview uh, when uh, you were a uh, brilliant crown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you looked amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and uh, immediately visible uh, that uh, you are a creative person. Oh, really thank creative. You. <laughs> I'm trying. Yes. Uh, yes. But I uh, know uh, you are uh, science. And uh, how uh, did you get uh, into this uh, professional? Into science? Yes. Um, so ever since I was a little girl, I just wanted to be a scientist. And as I got older, I figured I should go to college <laughs> and I studied uh, microbiology and chemistry. And then I just really wanted to do research. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> it was your childhood dream? Yeah, yeah. I just like seeing all the color changes and, you know, I just like change, I guess. <laughs> And um, what did you feel uh, when you find out uh, with your uh, disease? Uh, you didn't think it was uh, someone's uh, a bad joke because you for many years uh, have uh, worked in the science and uh, you have this uh, disease. Um <clears throat> so I've been in cancer research for 15 years. Um, so I know a lot about cancer. I actually, you know, touch the cells and, you know, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Basically, I uh, isolate the DNA and we look at the genes and stuff um, behind them. So um, when I got the call from my, it was a plastic surgeon who removed the mole on my nose and um, I was in the middle of sequencing and he said, I'm so sorry, but you have, um, at the time it was stage one melanoma, but it was 0.9 millimeters. And if you round up, that's one. And that made me a candidate for surgery. So um, I had a sentinel lymph node biopsy and they removed three, or excuse me, four lymph nodes. And uh, the one here had mm -hmm. micrometastasis, or I like to say they found one cancer cell. <laughs> so that um, prompted me to start uh, immunotherapy. And then, you know, all my scans were clean. And then it came back in 2019 with, uh, uh, metastasis to my brain, lung, spleen, and uh, pelvic wall. Oh, really? Uh, is uh, skin cancer is a common uh, disease uh, in your state? Uh, where you're from? Um, the newest statistic, according to um, uh, skincancer.org, or, you know, probably any of the major derma, dermatology sites is more than two people die every hour from skin cancer oh, really? in uh, the U.S. And I think it's trending upwards, you know, being one of the top five, ten, you know, cancers, maybe even number one, because I'm sure a lot of it goes undiagnosed or people just think that it's not going to happen to them. Uh, but uh, every person who faced uh, the disease uh, said me that uh, creativity helped him and uh, I know that uh, creativity uh, helped you and uh, allowed you to create uh, your business. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So as I was sitting in the chair receiving my immunotherapy, um, I just wanted, I have anxiety, so I needed something to take my mind off of all of the tests and scans and, you know, I didn't want my mind to go to nasty places. <laughs> so I figured I live here in Arizona, which we are a very sunny state, uh, desert, we have a lot of desert. And so as I was sitting in the chair, I 
would I figured I would start my own UPF 50 plus clothing. And my my take on it is, you know, we have this unique environment that's desert and usually when people or usually this UPF 50 plus clothing is inspired by water elements or something, you know, of that nature, but we are landlocked. So I thought that I would take a stab at it and do some desert things. Oh, I, I saw your brand. It's so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> to make sun safety fun and uh, fashionable because I think that's the best way of protecting yourself is just covering up. And then you don't have to worry about the, um, the politics of sunscreens and chemicals and things like that. Yes, uh, so it's really fun, uh, and I uh, mm, have a long uh, time uh, to think about uh, cancer is freak. I cannot <laughs> understand it. You don't I understand? <laughs> I have uh, many versions about it. Okay, so prick in the politically co correct world, it means like a can or like a the the prick of the cactus spine, but it oh, can really? also mean something naughty, right? Or like a bad person. <laughs> so yes. I'm calling cancer yes. the prick. Let's put it that way. Yes, yes, it's it's really fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's kind of it depending on where how i'm you know where i'm marketing my business it can be inappropriate so um you notice my crown um that's the pageant world and so you have uh young girls and things looking up to you so it's kind of inappropriate to say prick even if i do explain you know it's a cactus spine um we all know it means something naughty. <laughs> You're crazy. I know. <laughs> I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. <laughs> yes. yes, and uh, uh, do you have uh, any sun protection strategy? You have a sunscreen every day and uh, oh, you yes. wore, um, wearing your gold. So I have an umbrella in my bag. I bring a sleeved hoodie with me because, um, I don't know, I just, you never know how long you're going to be out or, or you might forget your umbrella, but, you know, I always try to have something with me and yes, sunscreen um, every day because I like to wear sandals because it's hot here. <laughs> uh, like and uh <laughs> Before you also use it, uh, this uh, protection, uh, before you faced uh, with your disease? Um, no. <laughs> no, no, I was uneducated. Well, not un uneducated. I know that the sun can cause skin cancer, but I was that person that, oh, it's never going to happen to me. You know what I mean? So, and I grew up in a time where... Um, I think I'm almost 40 years old. I was born in 82, but um, sunscreen was kind of a thing back then, but not as prominent as it is today. Um, yeah, so I did enjoy my sun time. And yeah, you know, I never burned or anything like that, but um, I did maybe some like um, a month's, a total month's worth of time, um, maybe not minutes, but, you know, I'd go occasionally to the tanning salon, um, but I wasn't really into it, so I don't know, but skin damage builds up over time, right, so. <laughs> yes, and uh, skin cancer doesn't uh, discriminate based uh, on age, uh, race, gender, Nope, not at all. And usually the people with higher or excuse me, populations with higher levels of uh, melanin are diagnosed in the later stages, which are more often fatal. So and we I live in um, an area where we have a large Hispanic population. And, you know, yes, um, 
um, you know, melanin can be protective, but at the same time, it's not. <laughs> Uh, it's just a bad joke i think yeah it's yeah it's not like i think most people think you can just cut it out and you'll be fine but um i'm living proof evidence that uh it could spread to other major organs of your body like your brain that works everything <laughs> yes and uh uh what advice can you uh, give people to protect uh, themselves from uh, skin cancer? Uh, so always, it doesn't matter if you're 10 years old, five years old, you know, 100 years old, get a skin check every year. And then if you're diagnosed with a type of skin cancer, it's up to your dermatologist when you come back. Um, I have to go, well, I used to go every four to six months, but now I just got the green light to go every year. <laughs> so that's kind of scary, but good at the same time. Um, cover up because to me, my personal opinion, that's your best uh, protection against the UV rays. Sunscreen that's mineral based and 30 SPF or higher stay out of the sun between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. and just seek shade. 